So one of the best synchro monsters of all time has just been announced and I don't think anybody is really aware of how insanely powerful it is because it has three really really good and power creeping effects that again people are probably talking about what I personally don't even consider to be the best effects out of the three. So today we're actually going to try to figure out how good this card really is, if it could actually have an impact on the metagame and also on the future and how people deck build moving forward. So before we start, friendly reminder to like and subscribe motivates me so much to keep making videos like these and now let's jump right into it. Alright, so the card in question is Baroness de Fleur, a generic level 10 synchro, which is extremely rare. The last time we got one was Blood Rose Dragon, which has a pretty respectable effect to banish every card from both players' graveyards, but it wasn't it wasn't that appealing. Like you obviously can't really summon this as a as kind of like a as, as a part of your turn one board going first. So it's only really good in kind of like the late game when your opponent eventually gets a lot of cards in the graveyard. But Baroness de Fleur is actually good for several reasons. And it has has three effects. So the first one is once per turn, that is a soft once per turn, you can target one card on the field, destroy it. The second one is once while face up on the field, you can actually negate the activation of effect of any card that is actually being activated, and that is a hard once per turn, so regardless of the amount of Baroness de Fleurs that you actually control, you can only use this once. And the third and final effect is once per turn, during the standby phase, you can target one level 9 or lower monster from your graveyard, return this card to the extra deck, so Baroness de Fleur, and if you do, special summon back this monster from the graveyard. Yeah, this is huge. Like I said, we rarely get level 10 monsters with actual good effects, including Omni Negation effects, like this is unheard of. And on top of that, it has a Monster Reborn effect that doesn't even negate whichever that you summoned. So in other words, you could actually use this either to generate advantage by reviving back stuff like Uni Zombie Gozuki and stuff like that that I actually showcased in my zombie deck. Cards that would actually have effects on special summon or on the field to go even more plus because maybe you had to use them as synchro materials to make Baron the Fleur in the first place, and obviously Baroness returns back to the extra deck, so yeah, I can actually just keep summoning it over and over and over, but also a really cool thing about this is that it kind of reminds me of Skylark the Parent Dragon that I kind of used in the Virtual World deck to send a monster with Beatrice in order to revive it back during the standby phase. This is actually quite similar, so you can actually revive back Floodgate monsters like Fossil Dyna, Patches, Cephalo, whatever the name is supposed to be. Uh, of course, the barrier statues, although the sta Fossil Dyna is obviously much better, Better, a bunch of floodgate monsters that your opponent would actually have an absolute nightmare to deal with and this is almost feeling way too easy in this deck. Speaking of level 10 synchro monsters, like I said we barely have any generic level 10 synchros with actual good effects that you could potentially play in your deck and the only level 10 synchros that I can think of that were really played kind of competitively or considered to be played competitively were White Aura Bifemet, if again I'm pronouncing the name right, as well as Blood Rose Dragon and Leo the Keeper of the Sacred Tree. This card was played for the longest time, it was actually considered the best level 10 synchro in the game obviously because the other ones are like unsummonable. If you're thinking about like Satellite Ward or something like that, that you need like specific synchro monsters to summon it with, or the other kind of boss monsters for the main characters of like Yu-Gi-Oh 5Ds. Of course these cards aren't bad, but they're not generic level 10 synchros that you can just easily summon with two monsters. And Baroness de Fleur is, like I said, the first card to offer you that possibility. A really good card with three really good effects just all of them are just as good as the other except obviously the popping effect is not a quick effect so it is considered to be the worst but the omni negation effects and well the effect and the, the effect to tag out in order to revive back any monster from a graveyard is absolutely amazing and very welcomed i don't know if you actually thought about this but i actually showcased this combo in my zombie zombie combo video where i was kind of looping artifact scythe or at least i said that you could loop artifact scythe because of course you're going to be using cards like tg wonder magician as well as the artifact scythe of course the tg G was summoned off of Needle Fiber in order to make Baroness de Fleur during your opponent's turn, and then let's just say your opponent doesn't die next turn, you still have your Baroness, and then when you actually pass for next turn, during your opponent's standby phase, you can return it back to the graveyard, and then revive back the Scythe which locks your opponent from using the extra deck again, which is so unfair. I can't believe this is actually a thing, but honestly, I even want to say that Konami did that on purpose. They really wanted a level 10 synchro to finally be good, in order to allow people to finally play this mechanic that they kind of enjoy, instead of 
being forced to play Link monsters every single time or rank 5 monsters for example because obviously if you have two level 5 monsters and one of them is a tuner the first things that you think about are probably either going to be sulking into a monster or rank 5 or link 2 or something whatever but it's rarely going to be something like a level 10 synchro because the other ones like I said were not good enough and this one is an exception to the rule. So in conclusion do I believe that Baroness de Fleur is a good card? Absolutely I think it's an amazing card you should definitely keep your eye on that and definitely buy a few copies when it's going to be released because I think this card is just going to become even better and better and better in the future. Like I said just look at Leo the Keeper of the Sacred Tree. This card was good for years and years and years and the effect isn't even that good. So when we actually have a card that is actually good it's going to be good for way more years than Leo the Keeper of the Sacred Tree which only has an effect that prevents your opponent from targeting the card except during your main phase 2. Like what? <laughs> I don't think anybody cares too much about that especially in 2021 where a lot of cards are even unaffected by card effects and not even considered to be that good because you can just go normal summon lady debug make access code with a link 3 monster 5300 attack boom jump over you're dead but with a card like Baroness de Fleur which has so many effects that you can even negate your opponent's lady debug for example in this situation it would actually be absolutely insanity so that's all I had to talk about and kind of discuss for this card review on Baroness de Fleur if you guys have any comments or feedback or your opinion on the card please let me know in the comment section below I would love to hear your thoughts and yeah that's pretty much it thank you very much for watching don't forget of course to like and subscribe and I will see you next time peace